Amen. You may be seated. What a God that can just tell the wind and the storm, be still. Amen. Oh, good singing. I just want to sing. We have a special. Let's have a look.
Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let's have Brother Camilleri come at this time. He can preach to us. <clears throat> All right, First Kings 18. What a day, huh? Man, how fast the time flies, doesn't it, when you're having fun? Some of you guys will be in your pulpits tomorrow night at this time. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word tonight and Lord, fear and trembling once again. What a responsibility. What a, what a call. And Lord, it's all you. Lord, you be in the speaker, you be in the hearers, you be in the hearts, you be in the place that, uh, Lord, we might go away. Uh, Lord, like you did on the day of Pentecost, you, you, they heard everyone in their own language. I, I pray you'd speak tonight, Lord, that everyone might hear. Uh, Lord, you give them individually what they need, Lord. From this, Lord, or maybe it'll have nothing to do with what I'm saying, but you'd meet their need tonight, Lord. We're, we heard about Portland tonight. We heard about Colorado, and, and Lord, it's just and it's no different in the Northeast. And uh, Lord, if we don't, if we don't burn, Lord, who's going to burn? Help us, help us, God, tonight with the men, women, boys, and girls in this room, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to use First Kings 18, just a few verses to. Uh, just to make a point, <clears throat> verse, you know the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. I'm really not going to preach on that, but I am going to use some of these phrases here. Verse 23, you know, he's, got, he's having a challenge with these prophets of Baal. The people are, like they're doing today, halting between two opinions. And the Lord, uh, Lord through Elijah said, get in or get out. If it's God, serve him. If it's Baal, serve him. And so it's Elijah's turn here, and he says... Uh, Verse 23, 1 Kings 18, 23, Let them therefore lay it on the wood and put, say those words, no fire under. And you call, and call you the name on your, of your gods, and I'll call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first for your many, and call on the name of your gods, but put, say those three words, no fire under. <clears throat> Hold that thought. I told you Sunday morning I grew up in an Italian-American home, and uh, a lot of that centered around food. And uh, those that know me closest know I love cooking. You can probably tell by looking at me I love eating. I'm not big on the cleanup part. Uh, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of practical applications with food and preaching. One of the young ladies that's heard me preach elsewhere said, you going you gonna to preach on food this week? I said, we'll probably, we'll probably get there. But I, uh, I, like to, I like to eat all kinds of food. I love to cook all kinds of ways. Uh, I like roasting. I like frying. I like uh, simmering. I like smoking. I like grilling. Uh, uh, as a side note, I'm kind of a, kind of a sucker for uh, infomercials. You know, I mean, I just get into them things. I got the, I got the comfort click belt. Uh, I got the... You know Mike Gibson? Anyone know Mike Gibson? I'm standing in a parking lot in Florida, and James Knox, as we're preaching down there, and right in the middle of our conversation, he says, how you like that belt? <laughs> what? He goes, how you like that belt? I said, what, my click belt? He said, yeah, I got one. We were on the ground dying laughing anyway. And I got the my pillow, and I got the Ninja Blender, and I'm just saying this because this adds to my cooking stuff. I got the new wave oven. I got the newfangled electric pressure cooker, and I got the steamers and the crock pots and the countertop rotisseries. I had a commercial pizza oven in my office for years. You say, where's your office? Right off the kitchen. And, uh, and I actually moved it out to the kitchen a few years uh, ago. I told you Sunday, we serve between 30 and 50 people, sometimes more, uh, every single Sunday. A lot of time we have our Italian Sunday sauce. Uh, I know about cooking. Uh, I know about eating. Uh, I, I love grilling. And uh, I notice here, I only haven't been to Idaho once before, that our, our weather, I think, is comparable. We are right about maybe a couple degrees warmer, but we are right about where you are right now. And I like cooking outside, but I especially like it this time of year. 
There's just, there's just something about being out on that deck, you know, with a buddy. I was telling these guys out at the grill, uh, it's like male bonding over a grill. There's nothing like it, you know. I mean, you got your old ratty flannel on that you love or that, that favorite hoodie, and maybe you got your gun on to keep the wife and kids in line, and uh, <laughs> you, got you, you got a little cup of java there, and you're over that meat, and, and you know, if you're really blessed, uh, you got a pair of Italian lawn slippers that you wear outside once in a while, and the air is crisp, and the leaves are turning, and you know what you're smelling? You're smelling what the Bible calls a sweet-smelling savor. Amen. You know, you wouldn't smell that if you put human flesh on that grill. That tells you the Bible's true. But you stand over that meat, and really, in a, in a way, you're kind of fulfilling the, the Scripture. <laughs> I mean, in my case, listen, hey, brother, you laughing, you didn't hear me quote the verse yet. I got eight girls inside, prepare inside. Let's face it, grilling is a man thing. Now, I hope that's not chauvinistic, but I mean, my wife wouldn't know how to turn it on. But the women are good at the sides. Ain't they good at the sides? You know why they're good at the sides, don't you? Let, let us take care of the rest of those ribs, amen? But it says, God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Okay, we did our part. I got eight girls inside fixing the sides. And then, uh, and then it says, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Dominion. That's exactly what I'm doing over that grill. That cow and that pig and that fowl knows who's doing the cooking and who's being cooked. <laughs> and it's just, it's a beautiful scene. And the way the process usually goes in our house, uh, Take that meat out, and, and I like to rub a little olive oil on there and put a little Montreal seasoning, and I'll go out and I'll light that grill because you've got to get it hot, man, for that original singe to lock in those, that flesh has got to seize up so you can lock those juices in, and the girls are inside prepping the stuff. And from time to time, I, I have what I call a culinary tragedy. You light the grill, get it nice and hot, you come in, you get your meat, you oil it up, you Montreal it up, the girls are getting the stuff. You're approaching that grill and something's wrong. And sure enough, you know what you find when you open that grill? You find the same thing of the instructions that Elijah gave the prophets of Baal. You find no fire under because the propane tank is empty. And now you got $50 worth of meat. You going to fry a ribeye steak? You going to boil it? You going to broil it? <laughs> That's a bad day. <laughs> and that familiar scene, how many ever been there? Oh, yeah. yeah, I got a witness then. <laughs> Coupled with Elijah's instructions for the prophets of Baal is what's birthed this message. Tonight I want to talk about life without fire. You ever stop to consider how different life would be if we had no fire? Consider, number one, how hungry you would be without fire. Imagine a diet of food, even if you're a vegan, without fire. You can't boil there goes your beans, your grits, your pasta, your rice, and your Idaho potatoes. I love saying that here. <laughs> you can't sear, saute, or simmer. There goes your Sunday sauce that we talked about Sunday. You can't roast. There goes your Thanksgiving turkey and your chicken and your beef and your pork and in the oven. Uh, you can't smoke barbecue. You'd have to close Texas. You can't fry chicken. <laughs> you can't fry chicken. You'd have to close the southeast. So much for chicken wings, invented 50 miles from where the buffalo chicken wing was invented, where I live, forget about uh, buffalo. Uh, you ever been on an Indian reservation? You know what they like, fry bread. We were out with Brother Haynes this, you'd have to close the reservation, man, if you had what? No fire. You know what you'd be? You'd be hungry. And how, how could there be a San Francisco without fruitcake? 
I'm telling you, you would be hungry without fire. No rigatonis, no pasta vazul, no pasta lendicchia, no pizza, no cardoons or chicoria for the Italians. No gandules, no chicharrones, no borscht or pelmenia for our Ukrainian friends and sushi. Just I'm going somewhere. Don't worry. Uh, uh, uh. No uh, sushi just wouldn't be the same with hard rice. Think about it. I'm telling you, you'd be hungry without fire. Think of a cookless Bible. You know, everything's cookless, this and that. Cookless Bible. Sarah had no cakes to bake for the angel on the hearth of the angels. There's no bread and pottage for Esau. There's no showbread in the tabernacle and temple. There's no burnt offerings for the priest. There's no loaves for the 5,000 and the 4,000. And there's no fish on the coals for the disciples. I'm telling you, when someone faces life without fire, they're going to be hungry. John 18. Just sit in the tub of God and soak tonight a little bit. Amen. John 18. Verse 18. 18, 18. The servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals for it was cold. And they warmed themselves and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Uh, not only you'd be hungry without fire, you'd be cold without fire. Now we live in an age of devices and you know our kids, they, they look at these screens all day. They think that thing up on the wall is what puts the heat out. No, at the end of that is a wire that goes into some kind of oil flame or propane flame or some element burning or some solar, the, the sun. You know, I burn with coal up there. We have some rough winters. I think we get between 10 and 13 feet of snow total. We live right on the lake. I walk along the Lake Ontario every morning of my, uh, my, my life. <laughs> um, and that, that coal keeps it nice and warm. I like it between 80 and 85 in the winter. But every once in a while, you, I mean, we're talking about summer clothes in the winter. And uh, I, I wake up in the night, because old guys got to wake up in the night once in a while, and, uh, and, and I'll sense a little problem. And sure enough, man, I'll, it feels funny, like it's not 85. <laughs> and I'll go downstairs, and I'll go fire under. Listen, when the, it's probably the same way here, but when the power goes out in the northeast in February and it's 10 degrees, it's at least panic in your cold. It's at worst, you're dead. I'm telling you, without fire, you'd be hungry. You'd be cold, Genesis 18.4. Genesis 18, 4. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Not only would you be hungry, not only would you be cold, but you'd most likely be dirtier than you are right now. I mean, you enjoyed, out some of some of you nine-year-old boys, I know you don't like your baths. Man, them kids, you can't get them in the bath. And then they're 16, 17, you can't keep them out of the shower. <laughs> you know what the end of that line is? There's a hot water tank, there's something, there's some kind of fire, there's some kind of element, there's something heating up that water. You know why people smelled in the old days? How'd you like to go down to a stream and have to take a bath in February? What's our Italian brother's name? Frichetti? Frichetti. How'd you like to have to draw bath water in a little pot on the stove for me and Brother Fischetti. You know, here's a bathtub here. Here's a... It's no wonder they stunk. <laughs> Too much work. I'm telling you, you'd be dirty, dirtier without fire. Acts 16, Acts 16. Hang on now. I know you're saying, what's he saying? It's coming, Acts 16. I love this one. Life without fire. Acts 16, verse 28. And the keeper of the prison, waking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he, that's the jailer, called 
for a light. Consider how not only hungry, not only cold, not only dirty you'd be, but how in the dark you'd be. You got no candles, you got no torches, you got no sunshine, you, you got no solar. You know what you'd be? You're going you're to be hungry and cold and dirty and half blind. And then lastly, consider how stuck you'd be. <clears throat> if you drove a vehicle here 30 minutes, uh, there was about a half a million explosions at a thousand degrees inside that engine. You got no cars, you got no airplanes, you got no trains, you got no ships. Without fire, you're hungry, you're cold, you're dirty, you're half blind and stuck. Doesn't that sound like America spiritually today? Oh, yeah. Doesn't it sound like some churches today? I, I heard a, a traveling evangelist say one time, uh, Many are called and few are chosen. He said, a lot of the places I go, many are cold and a few are frozen. <laughs> and I don't know how it was here in the West, but I know when I got saved 33 years ago, may, I look back now, I didn't know what revival even was. I grew up Catholic and never had a Bible, nothing. But, but I look back now and I'm telling you, brother, the churches, the, the Bible-believing churches yeah. were booming. Yeah. You, you, you'd come to church Who's going to get saved tonight? You'd come to church in these meetings, and it didn't matter if it was Dr. Rockman, if it was Heil, if it was this guy, if Johnny Pope, whoever it was, who's going to get called to the mission field tonight? Two guys got called to Zambia at opposite ends of the altar at one night. Is that happening in your church, guys? Like the brother said today in 2019? So the, the leaders are looking for answers. Men, they saw that like the brother preached today, and he, he preached it right. Say, say not the former days are better than these. Right, right. You're not wise. You know why? Because they ain't the former days. But I'd like to see a little of that glory back, yeah. and the leaders would like to see a little of that yeah. glory back. And so we got this argument among theologians. What can we do? What can we do? See, they got addicted to growth. It's like a bodybuilder on steroids. They, just, they got addicted to growth. And all of a sudden that growth, growth leveled off. I got my opinions of why. I think a lot of it had to do, even though we are not the televangelist crowd, we are associated when we knock on someone's door or you're one of those people with the Bible. And you got 30 years of evolutionary teaching and you got 30 years of no mom and dad in the home and just the whole thing came together and here we are with a high calling to, to keep going in it. But the new church architects, they say the way they're going to fix it the problem is the old way. It's the old hymns. That's not good. That's what they say. There's no life in those. There's no fire in those. Well, they say, they say we got to be more like the world to win the world. And, and they like rock. Not, not the rock we like. They got rock, but their rock's not our rock. And, and we're Christian, so we'll make Christian rock. Abbreviated, crock. And then they say, we got rap. And we say, well, we'll make Christian rap. I won't abbreviate that. We need the dancing girls. And maybe if we act lost, they'll like us enough to come. They say too much preaching. You can't have too much preaching if we're gonna if we're gonna get it like we we got too much. These these young people they don't want the preaching, and so we we get whatever we got now. We get rid of the pulpit, and we bring in a stool. And listen, if you wore ripped skinny jeans and a flannel as a pastor before the new architects came out, then go ahead and wear your skinny jeans and ripped flannel and all that. But, but did you look in a book and see the picture of all the... They call us cookie cutters. They all look the same. They're on a stool. Bible ain't nowhere. They got their little bracelet, a little water bottle, and um, in an hour and 15 minutes of the worship team with Lady Godzilla leading the thing, and they got 15 minutes of preaching. That's a sample on a stool. I call that stool sample preaching. <laughs> we got to get rid of all that. 
Because they long for the days where sinners were getting saved and saints were selling out and the churches were solid. Then you got those of us. We're sticking to the old ways. Amen. Amen. I pastor the old Paz Bible Baptist Church, Jeremiah 616. We're doing it the old way. What are we doing? I didn't have 14. I heard Rex Harrison preach one time. 14 adults got saved. So while the theologians argue over methods and what will bring the glory back, I like to throw my hat in the ring and give a little suggestion. That might help, and it might not help the nation. If it doesn't help the nation, it might help your church. If it doesn't help your church, it might help your family. If it doesn't help everyone in your family, it might help you. I'll tell you what I think we need a little. We need a little more fire. Amen. Humans can't function without fire. The sun is a ball of fire. Spiritually speaking, I'm convinced we can't survive without fire either. And I'm not so concerned tonight about the world uh, 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 being hungry and cold and dirty and half blind and stuff. I'm concerned about my people getting that way. I'm concerned about me getting that way. I'm concerned about my family getting that way. That's what burned out means. The fire is gone. We heard about that this week. So let's, before we go home, look at the divine line to see if we can't find a little bit of fire and see if we can't get lit up. Because God forbid we go home with no fire under. Psalm chapter 39. Psalm chapter 39. Hey, you young uh, techie guys, you want to get rich? Invent an app with a Bible thing on it that when you're doing this, it goes, and you, you hear the sound coming out because it'll, it'll. <laughs> Psalm 39, watch, watch, watch. I want to start with fire in our personal time, in our quiet time. Psalm 39, 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue, I will keep my mouth with the bridle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence, watch the progression, I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was musing, the fire burned, then spake I. But not until then, then spake I. With my, you know what muse mean? Muse, muse simply means to think. And you know what? We don't have time to think anymore. We got more time saving conveniences and we got less time to think about God than we've ever had. Now, our muse, we got a lot of that. That means not to think. And we can get to 10,750 on the latest uh, online game, but we don't know God. And if we're going to get fire, we're going to need God. And if we're going to get fire, it's going to have to start in the quiet time, in the personal time. You know our God is, is described as a consuming fire. <laughs> so it just makes sense that if a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And he thinks about the consuming fire that the same thing will happen to him that happened to the psalmist in 39, then he's going to start to burn down in his heart as he's thinking about God. Would you describe your quiet time as a fire? 2 Peter 3, James 5. We'll start with the fire of prayer. And I'll just hit everything briefly here. Amen. 2 Peter Chapter 3, let's just look at a word here, and then we'll look and see how our prayer is doing. 2 Peter chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 5. I'm sorry, 10. 10. 
But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with, say the next one, fervent fervent heat. All right, James 5, you guys know the verse. What's it say? The effectual? You know what that is? That's hot. That's where you get fever from. God's not answering my prayers. He didn't say he'd answer. My my prayers aren't availing much. uh, Why aren't my prayers availing much? Maybe because they're not fervent. And I'm not saying you've got to jump up and down like a prophet's of Baal, but you and I preachers both know the difference between prayer and hot prayer. I'm talking about when you're getting in and something is going on. You say, what is it? I don't know what it is, but I know what it isn't. I don't think we need more prayer. I think we just maybe need some fire in the prayer we got. We get in our prayer meetings and we're 75,000 minutes on request. Aunt, Aunt Judy's hangnail and Uncle Frank, and believe me, if, my, if I got a hangnail, I'm going to be on the top of the list. Amen. But, 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 and then, okay, brother, pray for us two minutes and we go. That's not fire in the quiet time. I don't think we know know the book on prayer, know the sermon on prayer, know the seminar on prayer, know the study on prayer. I think we need a little fire in the prayer that we got. Does hungry and cold and dirty and blind and stuck (laughs) describe your quiet time? If so, why don't you do like the Philippian jailer and call for a light? And you're not going to get that hot quiet time with with Instagram buzzing on your rear end or in your purse. In fact, you're not going to get that quiet time if you do all your emails and all your thing. You, you're not going to be able to think about nothing. God's got to be the first one in there. Then you deal with that stuff. I'm telling you, we're being robbed of our fire, and that's part of it, because you'll never be more in public than you are in private. And I'm preaching to me, and I'm preaching to me. Fire in the prayer, Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23, verse 29, you know it. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock of our hard hearts in pieces? Listen, the Bible ought to heat you up. (laughs) Don't you know this old world and this old flesh and that old devil wants to put your fire out? Anybody that heats with wood or heats with coal or whatever it is, you know in the morning you got to stoke up that fire. you got to get that thing because it's... But listen, the day before, them kids and that wife and that husband and that ministry and those church people and the Sodomites and, and, and Michael Savage and Rush Limbaugh and all the rest of them, you know what they did? They put your fire out and you're all wrung out. And you sleep, and the smart people tell you that when you sleep, uh, uh, God will sow something. They don't put that part in. But you, 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 it's like resetting a computer, man. Everything gets washed. That's why you can't put all that other stuff in before you put God in there. Everybody that burns with a wood stove or a coal stove knows you got to stoke the fire in the morning. Why? Gets the chill out. Heats the house up. What makes us think that the, uh, the earthly house of this tabernacle is any different? You've got to get some fire within so that we can go out to this world that wants to douse our fire and heat it up. Amen. I'm talking about life without fire. I'm talking about fire in your quiet time. Preachers, listen. Study prepares the message. Hot, quiet times prepares the messenger. They are equally as important. Guard your mornings. One of my favorite sayings, I think it was John Wesley, and I've said it many a night to many a man. All good men are in bed by 10 o'clock. Now, I'm not putting a curfew on you. You say, well, because I'm I'm a firm believer. I think we are lacking in fellowship. I think it says doctrine, fellowship, breaking the bread, prayers. I think, the, I think the thing with the qualifications of a bishop has that one verse in there that we're all big on when it comes to that one thing you can't be due because you ain't qualified. But I think it says something about be given to hospitality. 
And if you've been a pastor for 10 years and you've never had a family over your house for dinner, I don't think you're given to it. So I'm big on fellowship, but, but fe we could fellowship ourselves to hell. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I don't mean lose your salvation. Listen, when do, when do I stop my fellowship? When it starts interfering with my fellowship with God. Yes. Talk to your girlfriend all night and say nothing. Ain't got time to get up for Jesus. And you got to run off to school. And you're starting the day with no fire. Yes. No. I'm talking about Fire. In the quiet time. We need some fire in our personal time. Number two, John 5. And I'm only going to do three, so we're good. See that? I love it. Mm, what a book. See, you kids, you take it for granted. I didn't see it till I was 26 years old. Speaking of John, verse 35, he was a burning and a shining light. Amen. We need some fire in our pulpits. Amen. Yes. You know, the ones with the strange fire, they're competing. They got Mrs. Godzilla up there dancing. They got the pretty girls with the tight ripped jeans. They got the, they got the sound systems. They got the lights. They got the free pizza. They got this. They got that. We're going to need some fire. <laughs> we all got a pulpit. You're a preacher, you got one up on the platform. Maybe you got a music stand in a rest home or in a mission house. Maybe you got a bed on the back of a pickup truck on a street corner. Uh, maybe you got a, a desk next to that person, teenager, that you're uh, in school with. Uh, maybe, Mom, you got a dinner table, but I'm telling you, we all got a pulpit, and we need to put some fire in our pulpit. I'm talking about something exciting in our message. Otherwise, you got a grate, you got $50 worth of meat, but you got no fire, and it's just not as palatable raw. And you're going to leave people hungry if there's no fire. Isn't that what they say when they leave? It's usually a woman that doesn't like the pastor. Makes, makes her husband tell him, we're not being fed. Isn't that what they say? We're not being fed. This guy told me once, this skinny dweeb. His wife was the opposite. And I know his wife told, why am I looking at you? I know his wife told him to tell me this. All your messages are the same. I wanted to knock him out and repent later. In Jesus' name. But guys, if we're honest, learn from your critics, man. Is he right? At that time, I was probably preaching for 20 years. Every one of my messages sounds the same. I preach through 20 different books of the Bible, and they all sound the same. You're an idiot! Oh, wait, 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 wait. Lord, is there something to that? Lord, is there something missing? Yes. Man, why ain't they coming? They're just all liberal. Maybe because there's no fire. And you can, listen, this is the trouble. The preacher talked about it. You can't, I think Nate talked about it. You can't get your sermons from Ranger Bill's Two million online sermon outlines. Because you can't download fire. That's got to be downloaded from him. We need some, we, that's got to be our draw. I mean, we can't groove. It's against our rules. <laughs> We can't be cool fools skipping school and maybe if we're like the world, we'll win the world. Hey, the world is winning us. That's the trouble. But we can help them if we got some fire. Amen. Fire in our pulpits. We got the right book. We got the right divisions. We got the right doctrine. We got the right... What's wrong? Maybe we need a little fire. They asked John Wesley, why is it that people come from fire? wide by the thousands. He said, I set myself on fire and people come to watch me burn. 
You know what his prayer was? His prayer is what mine was <laughs> and is almost every day. God, make me a 10 alarm blaze. And a preacher's fire starts in the garden alone musing. And when you muse on this, then the mouth begins to open. Then the heart begins to burn. And when I say preacher, I'm talking about every believer. Fire in our personal time. Fire in our pulpit. I'll, I just added this one just before we got in here. Fire in our propagation. I'm talking about what we do out there. And, and I don't mean call down fire like those disciples that were wrong said. And I know I got a lot of public ministers in here, street preachers we used to call them. Can I just give you, listen, I'm, I'm going to be 60 years old next year. I've been doing this for 30, say for 33, preaching for 32, pastoring for 26. I've just seen a little bit. Let me just give you a, just a practical, you don't have to be mad when you preach on the street. Just my opinion. <laughs> it's uncomely. Yep. Amen. God loves you. <laughs> the Bible says why we were your sinners, I died for you. <laughs> why are you mad about it, Dan? I'm preaching at the Staten Island Ferry, where the, New, where the real New Yorkers are. <laughs> and I'm not saying you've got to do it like me. I'm just saying, just, just listen to the guy across the street preaching. All, and he's preaching to the buses where the windows are closed. And all you hear is, boom, boom, And he's going, boom, 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 boom. You get 60 years old, you ain't wasting your breath for that. Staten Island Ferry comes in, sits for 20 minutes. And we got banners and we got, that's when Brother Xander was in New York City. Can I have your attention, please? And I talk, I know New York, you know, so I says, I says, look at me. Where are yous going? <laughs> yous ain't got nowhere to go. What do you got to lose but to listen to me? Come on. And you start attracting a little attention. Listen. We're all sinners. Don't lie to me or I'll ask your girlfriend. We're all sinners. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. Let's face it. You know who Jesus Christ is. You know what he did, right? He came to die for... And I gave him the gospel. I'm not going to preach you the whole story. You believe? You repent and sorry for your sins? That could offend some of you, put you on the blacklist, but I just said repent, yeah. And then, uh, and then just ask Jesus to save you. What do you got to lose? Now listen, I'm going to pray. If you're praying this, head from, this prayer from your head, don't waste your time. I don't believe in praying. Do, do what you want. I said, just, just, just bow your head and just pray, but from your heart. And I led him in a sinner's prayer. Hey, if you're not ashamed, well, you say that to a New Yorker. I ain't ashamed. <laughs> Raise your hand if you just prayed that prayer. I'm talking about the Staten Island Ferry with a bunch of New Yorkers. One, two, three, four, 17 people. You can be nice. Man, I always start on that street singing. You ask me why I'm happy, and I'll just tell you. They're not used to that. Sometimes they'll say, you're not. Listen, I preach with guys that got beat down. And I wanted to throw a kick in, too. <laughs> you ought to be home folding laundry. I think that was Hezekiah chapter 4. <laughs> I'm serious. I want to throw a boot in myself. I'm talking about some excitement in our propagation. What about our kids? Is it all hell, fire, and brimstone? Yeah, you ever, how many of you ever had a puppy? Let me see your hands. Uh, I'll forgive you. I'll tell you my dog stories another time, but you ever notice a puppy? They are very excitable. Like you could look at a puppy and say, 
I'm going to take you out in the yard and skin you. And they'll go. <laughs> and all you got to do is look. That dog could be sound asleep and you just go. And they go. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> and they run all over. Now, if you got that dog and you said, what are you so excited about? I don't know, because he's excited. I was handing out tracks one time at the market, and another stooge came up to me. You know you see him coming. And he says, you're doing it wrong. I want to give him the Italian 45, four this way and five this way. <laughs> and you know what that guy said to me? He said, politicians hand stuff out like this. He says, you're handing out a gift. All right, move on. I hear you, buddy. Yes. I wonder if we stop railing on our kids and start getting a little more excited about Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They give you like those puppy dogs. No. What are you excited about? You know God real good? No, but I know Daddy's excited about him. Amen. I think there was something in the Havman DNA that that kind of spring down in there. <laughs> Fire makes the Bible better. What's it likened to? It's likened to water. That's what we give our audience, springs of living water. But you know you get some fire under the water, you get hot water. You know hot water cooks better. You're not going to cook beans with cold water. You know hot water cleans better. You ever try to clean grease with cold water on a rag? You know what that Bible says? That heart is as fat as grease. You know what we need? We need some fire under the water. It's likened to milk, right? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, what kind of milk do little babies like? Not cold. My nine liked it warm. I'm telling you, the, the fire makes the Bible better. It's, it's likened to bread. I love bread. <laughs> I've been, on this, I've been on this keto diet for 13 months. I didn't think we were going through the tribulation. <laughs> but I've been going through it for 13. Man, I love bread. But I'll tell you there's one thing I like better than bread. Hot bread. Because yes. <laughs> yes. it melts the butter. Fire makes the Bible better. How's your quiet time? Is it on fire? How's your propagation? How's your pulpit? Is there fire there? Maybe you do tonight, like, if it's dry, if it's cold, if it's dark, if you're walking away hungry. Maybe you do like the Philippian jailer and look up to him and call for a light. Fire in our personal time, fire in our pulpit, fire in our propagation, Brother John already spoke a little bit about it, so I won't talk about fire in the plate. But don't give your tithes and offerings like you're paying your heat bill. Right. We went through a season in our church, and I remember another church one time, and where something like this got really preached on the whole message, and every time the offering plates, glory to God! And they were dropping their quarters in there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> lastly, lastly, Second Chronicles 7. Get excited about giving. Oh, what do they want now? Oh, here we go with the building fund. Going to clean us out. <laughs> Come on, we seen that 401k statement. Second Chronicles. So who are you kidding? One guy told me, well, I got it, but it's not liquid. That means I can't get at it. We used to call that socking it away and crying broke. Okay, anyway, Second, Second Chronicles chapter 7. Verse 3. Oh, man. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good and His mercy endureth forever. Man, they couldn't hardly... You know what? Their hearts were in. They were assembled. 
uh, their offerings were in, their sacrifices were in. And you know what we need? We need some fire in our praise. And I think we had some this week. You know, I could fill this church to overflowing just like that Sunday. I could fill every one of your churches, I don't care how big or small they are, to overflowing. I could get people in your church that never dreamed about coming to your church. I'm talking about people that drove by up the road that day. They'd pull in. I'm talking about public officials. I'm talking about liberal media would be stopping by and talking about you. You know how? Just give me a gas can and a match. The mayor would come, the firemen would come, the news media would come, you'd be on TV, liberals would come. You know why? Fire attracts attention. And you know what they got in them churches that we, we even if it crosses our mind, I'll tell you, I, I, I was invited to one of them churches Man, I got I was invited to one of them churches and it wasn't it wasn't that part of it, but it was the the sports ministry, it was the football ministry. And there was an old friend, man, he asked me to come. This is a few weeks ago, man. I he says, You'll preach to hundred and twenty men. I said, How many of them are lost? Ninety-five percent. So man, I don't want to be critical. I'm not questioning people's motives, but you know God not gonna let us. Do that. We, we, we think we got to do it right. We think we got to do it according to the Bible. I think a lot of that stuff is, uh, is, is strange fire. But, but fire attracts attention. Are you on fire at your workplace? Are you on fire at your school place? Listen, they think you're goofy anyways, man. Live up to their expectations. Oh, he's a Bible thumper. If they're going to th call you a Bible thumper, start thumping! <laughs> Why not? It's all we got is fire. We can't play those other games. You that love the Bible, you ever think about how much fire is in that Bible and how much fire kicked things off? You're four words in, and it says God. He's a consuming fire. Daniel sees the one, listen, sitting on a throne like a fiery flame, his wheels on fire like polished brass, his eyes are like lamps of fire, and the whole thing sits on a sea of glass mingled with fire. There went up smoke out of his nostrils, and fire, 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 fire came out of his mouth, devoured the coals, were kindled by it. Listen, without a Bible, a fire, listen, a Bible without fire is a Bible without God. And so might as well our life be without fire as a life without God. Sixteen verses in, he's creating a ball of fire that without it you have no life. <laughs> the God that's a consuming fire at the beginning of Moses' ministry goes into a bush and doesn't consume it, and that kicks off Moses' ministry. Elijah on his big day at Mount Carmel, you know what he said? He said the God that answers by fire. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you preach are going home to. Maybe it's, this has been a, just an oasis. And at home, it's a little dark, and it's a little cold, and you're a little hungry. <laughs> and you know what they want to do when you get back? Maybe some of your church people, they want to put your fire out that you've got here. Yep. See, if we started that fire here in the, in the, in the physical economy, in the physical world, Water puts out fire. That's what the world wants to do. In God's economy, you know what happened on Mount Carmel? Fire put out water. Don't give in to them. Don't let them douse you. You burn that water when they try to put you out. And you're only going to burn it if you take the steps that we talked about taking. You're only going to burn and as hot in public as you start in private. How's your quiet time? What a Bible filled with fire. You know, us, us KJV, et cetera, et cetera, we're always arguing about those tongues, you know. Tongue. I'm going I'm to beat that charismatic up with what I know. Cloven tongues like as they think that's big. 
And when we're all done arguing, what, I can say I'm right. I tore him up, <laughs> you know. But you ever see what that thing says? It says, and, 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 and cloven tongues like as of fire. What, what is that? Is, what, was it fire? Was it not fire? Was it see-through? Was it open? I don't know what it was, but it says, it says, and it sat on each of them. Sat, it, singular, sat on each of them. You know what I see there outside of winning an argument with a charismatic about tongues? The preachers were on fire. How'd they do that day? Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> hey, man, the preacher's on fire. Wouldn't that be something if they said that about you when you got back? <laughs> well, they're just dead and cold and dry and thirsty. Man, why don't we go back and light them up? <laughs> At least for a week. <laughs> <laughs> the last chapters of the Bible reveal to us while you turn to Revelation 15, Revelation 20, we'll be done by 8.30, I think. Revelation 15, Revelation 20. You know, at the end, the whole thing is going to be on fire. If you've got a Bible without fire, you don't have a Bible. But look at this cool, because maybe some of you all ain't saved. I don't know you young people. You're an undercover agent. You're faking it. You know you don't know God from the man in the moon. And you're going to go to hell. Don't doubt it. And I think, I think there's, I don't want to get doctrinally arguing, but I think there's levels. I think there's low as hells. He said, he said to those people in Tyre Sidon, if I did these miracles here in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented. Maybe religion without Christ after being warned for 20 years and brought up in a church is worse than Sodomite when it comes to the judgment. So look at Revelation 15.1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great wonder, marvelous, seven angels having seven last plagues uh, in them filled up for the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass, watch, mingled with fire, who's on it? And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image, over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And without getting into to dividing up doctrine, let's just say God's guys are on, on the fire. Revelation 20. You know the verse. Verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever is not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. I'm talking about when it's all said and done. Saints are on the fire. Sinners are in the fire. Listen, in the physical realm, fire is not a nicety. It's a necessity, and I think it is in the spiritual realm if we're going to get anything done for God in our families, in our communities, in our churches. Number 16, I promise this is the last. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers 16. I appreciate that message on the priesthood. <laughs> Father Joe, <laughs> I came up Catholic, you know. Uh, we're getting ready to go home, right? We're getting ready to go home to our quiet times again. Reset, man, the party's over. <laughs> you know what Moses said? He said, you've dwelt on this mountain long enough. Yes. Go your ways, it's time to conquer the land. Got to go back in, got to go back in. And uh, we're going back to our pulpits and we're going to our quiet times and we're going to our praise and we're going to our propagation. And I don't know about you, but I've been fired up the last few days. I got, I got to tell you, young guys, I'm encouraged, man. I told my wife, I said, I'm encouraged. There's some young men that got the fire. There's some that know the Bible. There's some men that are very confident in the Bible, and there's some men still around that aren't ugly about it. Because pride ruins it all. Pride stinks. I've been fired up. Now here's our assignment. Number 1637.
Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning, watch, watch, and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hallowed. And I'm not sure that's all of the right context, but I know what we got to do, what we took in here, and how we got encouraged here, and how we lit up here, and we, our fire's burning here, and we're going to go home and have hot, quiet times, and hot Bible time, and hot prayer time. You know what we got to do? We got to spread the fire yonder to the people. That we might start burning, and our churches might start attracting attention with the real fire, not the false fire. But before they could spread the fire yonder, they had to go and get some for themselves. Has your fire gone out? I like when I go back, especially when I've been in a meeting like this, like all our people, they like look at me. Yes. <laughs> like I know something happened. Now be careful, guys, because they didn't go to the meeting. I've had guys come back from a meeting, and the, uh, I think Nate was talking about, you know, they're going to they're gonna change everything and make it like the church I was at. They didn't go to the meeting. But don't be afraid to spread the fire yonder. That they might say like they said in Pentecost, the preacher's on fire. Mom is on fire. Dad is on fire. Because God forbid we go home with no fire under. Pastor? Let's take a little time to pray right before you go home. Call for a light. Why don't you come and call for a light? Lord, I, I can't go home without something burning in me. Lord, I'm soaking wet. I need you to send your fire to lick up the water that's drowning me out. Help me, Jesus. Just let the piano play for a little while. Give me fire in the mom. Give me fire in my school. Give me fire in my Sunday school. Not the nicety, the necessity. Oh, and I. Ask for a light. If you're lost here tonight, you don't want to burn in the fire. Not for a second. And you don't have to. You don't have to. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And if you've heard that one time or you've heard that 10,000 times, the message is true. You can be saved. You need to be saved. Ye must be born again. Some of you don't know how to start a fire. You've never started a fire. You need to get around some people who start fires. don't throw a log on the top and put a match on it you got to get some kindling and you have to get some small dry stuff and put some more small stuff on there and get a little bigger and a little bigger and you just got to learn that you got to watch and there's a lot of fire starters around here they know how to do that they know how to help you Five twenty two, let's sing this song. Number five twenty two, let's stand. Breathe on me, breath of God. <clears throat> five hundred and twenty two. Breathe on me, breath of God. Won't you sing it as a prayer? 
Breathe on me, breath of God. Number 522. Here we go. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until my will is one with thine to do and to and do. Breathe on me. divine breathe on me breath of God so shall I never die but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity I hate campfires. I don't like the smell of them. I don't like the dirt of them. I have a Weber grill and a Traeger grill. I can roast weenies and steaks and briskets on that. But at our new house, not only do we have a cat, but we have a fire pit. And we go out there and sit sometimes where the teens will come over and sit. And we put a fire in there. <clears throat> and we put it out. We don't usually put water on it. We just let it burn out. And if you wake up in the morning, if you wake up in the morning, you, a lot of times there's still just a little smoke. And my mom's worried about it, that it's going to burn all her house down. But there's a little smoke. And, and all you really have to do all you got is get down on, on, on your hands and knees are you hearing me? And you just gotta. And that thing will flame up again. You, you just need a little breath on you. And you just gotta get on your hands and knees. And get the fire burning again. And I think that's for all of us. That just is a good application for everyone. And to take home and spread the fire yonder. Right? And, uh, we try to pray for you. I, I try to pray for you. Most of you I know well and try to pray for you and your churches. And I and the many of you are going to go home tonight, some of you, tomorrow morning, some of you, and you're going to go back to your churches and preach. And I think that last admonition was so important. So many of your church people, they're not here. Now, you that are here, by the way, from other churches, thank you. I, man, that is awesome. Thank you. But, but there's so many of the church, they're not here. So don't burn them out. <laughs> right? Don't, like, you're not a dragon breathing fire tomorrow night, all right? Be careful of that. But just stay hot. Yeah. Hey, and if we can be an encouragement to you, or I can be a blessing to you, or we can be a blessing, let us know. Like, we're on the same team. Yeah. And I need the prayer, and you need the practice, and you need the prayer, and I need the practice. Yeah. We, can, we, can, yes. we can work together. And finish and finish clean and finish clean with joy. Thanks for coming. It's been really, really good. I want to thank every pastor, preacher, evangelist, missionary. You came. Thank you. I couldn't preach all of you if I tried. And you wouldn't want that anyway. You're full. But man, those that you preached, thank you. Those that didn't preach, thank you. We were full this year, weren't we? Come back next year. We'll, we'll be here still. And, and fill it again. All right? Now, Many of you know we're, build, we're looking to build, and I, I hope that